let's continue on to another base lady DVD sets, and that of course the Milkcrete sets. So yeah, I'm basically doing this a three part version, so definitely uh for be for sure Richard, for that recipe in my mind. So of course, uh we're gonna start off none of basically a animated that movie that well I'm not an animated movie. <laughs> I wish it was an animated movie. Uh anime series and I only run for forty episodes and I'm surprised that Mel Creed, they really are just step up their game which, I mean they there's some milky stuff that I'm just really looking forward to getting. I'm just I'm just love their their sets. I mean they're just they're just awesome, really. With the coolest version of Mel Creed, you're really getting the ball. I mean yeah, of course uh um what's that other basic movie? Well, the uh, DVD company, um, Chat Foundry. Yeah, they're fine, Richard, but they really, but Metal Creek, they really are trying to step up with their game. And that's, of course, basically, again, the 40 episode series, Street Sharks. Now, I haven't seen Street Sharks since, uh, I think, when, it's, when it was barely new in the 90s. And this was something that I was really looking forward to, to basically picking this up because this was during 1940, 19, 19, 19 94 to 1996. So this was during right after originally when um, this show got popular, and this was of course the Deke Entertainment uh, anime cartoon. It is a typical version of, of Teenage Mutant Turtles, but it involves with sharks. Nothing more I can say about it. But I do like the 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 idea of having a reputation of, of Teenage Mutant Turtles for other basic of uh, base animals. There's of course there was Street Sharks. There was of course the Screaming Dinosaurs. One of them to be the four basically uh, kind of like turn them to half show Ninja Turtles kind of like rip off, and I think that's what I know of. I don't know what other basically anime they did that rigid format to make re rip off of the Ninja Turtles. Uh, I know, of course, um, Battletoads is like a adaptation of of uh, uh, of uh, rip off of Ninja Turtles. So that's 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 the third one, and I think that's pretty much it. That's what I know of. Originally. That's pretty much it. But really, I enjoy really watching some of the episodes. Um, didn't really watch much often of it because, well, it just kind of got a little too weird, Richard. But still, I did like to watch the. I did watch the first pilot. I did watch the first base of how they were generic. They were generic. How we pronounce it? Gen gene themselves basically turned into sharks into the format. If you look at Bruce, of course, you turtles. They turned to humanized, basically turtles and. For basically, you got the humans turning to human, basically sharks that basically not really eat pizza, but also eat kind of like junk food. <laughs> That's the base of uh, this base of this anime form. But it is a nice version to basically see this form. So of course, we have the front cover, which you got all the four uh, sharks characters. I don't much know much about the characters, but I know for a fact it is pretty uh, epic. Of course, their name is of course Johnny. John, Bobby, Corbett, and Synchronum, if I pronounce the name right, who basically team up to stop Dr. Canudan and his basically deadly species of basically transforming the citizens into fictionalized city into basically mutants with no free will. Yeah, that's uh, pretty epic right there, originally. That's a uh, nice version. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So that's, of course, the uh, the entry base of how the sharks were, were basically created and you do have a bonus episode of cops the case of the boy who cries to see monster cry the sea monster and that's pretty nice so based on towards the set well this is a milk Creek set and i actually did not like the well i didn't say i didn't like which i just don't like the fact that you got the uh basically uh milk Creek, uh dvds in a basically uh former package of basically you put them in a uh, um, in the, how do you pronounce it? Those black uh, um, casing. But I did venture fashion myself to put them in the nice and DVD casing, but the only thing is the four disc set. So you have this one and two. I'm take the disc out. I gotta be careful with these sets. And then you have this three and four. So not too bad. And of course, you do have a bonus episode of the, um, of Cops, which is down here. About to see, there we go, down there, and that's pretty much it. So, originally, to my sense, I really kind of like this anime. I, mean, I finally remember seeing this on television. I know it wasn't really getting that much popular. I know they actually did uh, toys adaptations and actually did kind of commercial bits. So, yeah, I don't know if that was basically part of the cases of that, Richard, because uh, generally it was basically not really all of the obviously. 
And the next set version that I want to pick up, and this is the iPhone, remember? I used to own this on VHS originally, and I was surprised I didn't really own it anymore, so I didn't really mind it was on DVD. And I was, of course, Super Human Samurai Cyber Squad C Volume 1. Yes, I've been really wanting to basically see this on DVD format. I know they actually did a couple of basic VHS volumes, but I don't think they actually did an actual complete series set of DVD. But fortunately, thanks to Mel Cree, they actually did not only basic volume one, they actually did volume two. Uh, it's already out already. I'll definitely pick that up, which hopefully sometime being. Uh, of course, a rip off adaptation of Power Rangers. That's also another basic kind of rip off Power Rangers, and that is, of course, Tattoo, Superhuman Tattoo. Uh, Giant, something like that version. I can't pronounce it. But you know, the uh the kind of format version that they actually did receive from this this, this was been basically in nineteen ninety-three. And of course it was Dick Entertainment. So of course, basically on this base of the tile it says, Let's Samurai guys! It's time to kick some giga butt. Directed based of the stern cyber composition of the superhuman samurai cyber squad volume one. Matthew Grinfman, also basically uh, Mr. Daffar and basically the hot chick, starring sorry, as Sam Cullen, a, a zipper kid with basically the talent for a program of video games. One day, when Wild basically from the end of his rock band, recently, Sam was stuck between the sudden enemies and an energy source to transform him into the one that could create one of the characters of his video game, of the, one, of his, one of the characters in his video games. After Sam and his high school friends discovered that the alien wardrobe, alien warlord, pronounce the name right, warlords, has the effect of a digital world with monsters and masters in the creating of superhuman samurai cyber squad. In order of the samurai, and salmon, and salmon, salmon, the evil basic of gain of much of entered the cyberspace. To rid up base of the Earth basically answer the digital containment of its exposed well the exposed in well, digital inform digital inconvenient if I'm pronouncing that right right. In spoke of the uh, cyber based the world Sam Samurai style with Sam, Sally, Tragedy, and uh, Cindy. I can I've been pronouncing it Cindy Cindy Tramps and after Bub Abu I can't pronounce his name. As fighting the evil Comic Con, uh, Carnotan, and his evil men and monsters in the cyberspace conundrum. Yeah, not much much about this anime. Not much about this live action rip off Power Rangers sub uh, knockoff. But it's not a bad, really, uh, kind of like series. I know they actually did three seasons, if I'm not mistaken. I know it was probably three or two seasons. But. You get all 20 ep episodes of the Super Human Samurai Square for the first time on DVD, which is kind of interesting because mm, this show hasn't really got much fan, much fan art, which really, uh, much, uh, much, uh, can't speak, much as fans that people wanted. I mean, I fondly remember I used to basically own the toy, the actual basically uh, samurai toy, and along with basically with the samurai transformer uh, when he transformed the Mega. Uh, Superhuman Samurai Cyber, when all the main four vehicles perform based on the Superhuman Samurai Squad uh, 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 um, Megazord. And that's what basically this character is. You know, he's a samurai, but he's also a super samurai who is kind of the cyberspace take on basically in the uh, ninja format. <laughs> yeah, you can try to say that there's a lot of rip offs of stuff of base of, of this show because you can see that the martial arts and the martial arts of these is so kind of terrible. I mean, it's not bad. It's just not really proper thing because, of course, you got the guy, the character, the guy was basically in the uh, samurai suit is trying to do all these high kicks and everything else. It's like, and even the voice acting is just terrible. But it's actually this terrible, great looking to watch this again. And, you know, having this in a nice, rigid format, I mean, the quality looks nice. I mean, it's a little kind of picturishly uh, bitch a glinch, but. It's nice to decent quality, and I'm surprised that um, Shaft, I mean, Shaft Patrick, um, Mail Creek doesn't do that, doesn't try to ruin their quality for basic for nice and rigid sets. And yeah, dirt cheap for basic for about, uh, about 
five bucks. I actually got this online originally through uh, Amazon for about, I think what's going in total for, I think five or ten originally, basically depending on based on when they were selling. But uh, they were selling this for, for about five or ten dollars. So, contrary basis of that, you have, of course, the wonderful basic front cover of the Samurai Guy, or Superhuman Samurai. And on the back, you have a nice good artwork on the back of the Samurai Hero fighting a alien creature, somewhat. And you have the, uh, of course, the uh, clip. But you have, uh, I did not know uh, Matthew Wendell was in the show, which I did not know. It's like, oh my god, that's the guy who did uh, the... the uh, the uh, the son Richard from uh, Mrs. Sapphire and I was like oh okay that's yeah, yeah that is him and I just did not notice until basically he was just kind of like on manly just basically being the kind of the young consider but basically unknowing uh, child after Richard basically in that movie so that's not too bad Richard seeing him again Richard seeing this in this form I do remember fondly remember him but I did not notice he was in the show I did not notice until I basically uh, heard about he was in Mrs. Sapphire so yeah. So, in the base of the set, you have a, well, of course, a, <clears throat> a 3 disc set. So, you have, of course, this one, two, and then on the front of it, you have this three. So, not too bad, Richard, for basically this wonderful set. I mean, um, it only runs for about, well, let's see, uh, let me get this up first right here. So, there we go. Okay. Uh, it only runs about 10 hours and 30 minutes, so it's not too bad for basically for 20 ep 28 episodes. Uh, of course, this one was running for about 14 hours and 47 minutes. So compared for this, this is a lot more longer. Because like I said, this is only basically 40 episodes for the complete series. And this is only 28 episodes for basically for the uh, volume 1. So basically for that, that's pretty nice for, for these sets right here. So... Next up, we have, of course, movie adaptations that, you know, are very well kind of interesting. We'll get to the TV, other TV show sets, which will basically play a little bit later. But I do have two more basic TV show sets. So, to interpret that, we should we have a bunch of basic of Mel Crete's movies. Now, of course, Mel Crete is basically they are low budget, basically doing these low budget movies they put out, and I didn't really mind to get an version because I did have a bunch of food basic foodies. So, of course, we're gonna start off with. None other than War of Wars of the 20 legendary movies. This is, of course, you have all basically of, like uh, Tarzan, the Hero of Rome, and so forth. And even Hercules. You actually have a few basic of Hercules movies on this basic wonderful set. I haven't really gone through them. I have watched one basically of this set, and that was, of course, Targa, the Tarzan ones. And that was pretty much it, which is I know of, because, like I said, you have such a bundle of base of these movies. And they're just like, you either get like 20 or even 15 in base of per each basically uh, movie, basically for each disc. And it is a four disc set. And we open up. And this is what I kind of was very confused of. And this was, I don't know why. They actually put them in basically in a proper casing. Uh, they actually had, they didn't, they, they ditched it basically the uh, paper waste uh, sleeves and go with basically putting them in all together. But all in all, they're not really bad, Richard. The only thing I just I think that is, you know, Mel Creed's is always basically trying to go cheap and trying to make sure that they keep their sets really go cheap, Richard, until basically they get more basically uh, um, DVD casing for their for their sets. So hopefully, from Mel Creed, you know, keep up the good work, guys. You really are, you know, punching yourself, Richard, as uh, of course as uh, fans who are trying to get you know the movies, Richard, to. Well, basically people, fan movie, movie, movie fans who are basically wanting to see these movies. And of course, we have the, the 12 movie festival feast, Zombies on Brain. Now, I actually picked this up during, uh, through Halloween. And the one thing I wanted to pick this up is because not only you have all these, um, some of the hot, but you also get Night of the Living Dead. Now, I've been really wanting to see that movie for some time. And this is the first time I ever saw it. Really watching Walking Dead and basically watching The Night of the Living Dead and I guess Dawn of the Dead originally, I have to admit it's not really bad. The only thing I will say about uh, The Night of the Living Dead, it's a very kind of like sort of odd zombie type movie. It's not like just like blood and gore and everything. It's like it's like they were trying to develop what would the zombie would look like, how would the zombie would walk, how he would basically would 
will try to attack you or, or just things like that. And it's pretty kind of epic it's because you have Julie O'Don and uh, Don Jones and Ken Handerman in this movie. And I thought that was pretty nice Richard, to see it. But the only thing I find that pretty weird, which is that is the actors who are trying to portray as zombies. And, you know, it's it's a low-budget, you know, 1968 film. It's very well low-budget and everything else. Not only that, you have other basic zombie movies. You have, of course, The Complex of the Souls, Dead of the Man Walking, Horror of the Zombies, House of Basil of the Living Dead, uh, probably not the direct sequel, basically, of the, of the, of the Night of the Living Dead, um, King of the Zombies, The Last Man on, on Earth, Mutant, of course, Walk Night of the Living Dead, uh, Desires of the Zombies, Society of the People, Teenage Zombies, and White Zombie. So, for all the base of the zombie movies, you get basically 112 base of movie pack. So, that's not too bad. So, you have, of course, the front cover when you have the wonderful, bloody cover base of the zombie, and it's based on the list of the zombie around him. And on the back, you got a list of base of all the 12 movies on there, and they have glorious, glorious red text. I really like that, Rich. I like the red text, Rich. I like the texting, Rich. It really is nice. Then inside, of course, one of these days, you got them basically in a problem one DVD casing. I don't know what it is, but I guess because they want to go on cheap to, of course, um, I guess basically to London, basically to basically go on cheap. So that's fine. So then we go to another basically uh, set, which well, of course we have. Basically, another set, which I'm, you know, I love, I really love the spaghetti westerns, and I didn't mind to basically pick them up. Pick another basic spaghetti western. So, we have, of course, All West Outlaws, the 20 western movie pack, which is really nice. Um, I actually watched one of them originally, and that was, of course, the, what was it? I think it was something originally, I don't know, I can't remember what it was. But, all in all, you get all 20 movies, basically, in one basic set. I know, of course, you have One Eye Jack, which is actually the, uh, of course, the other private base of uh, Mel Quita that I actually basically own uh, a couple uh, months basically when I was just moving my old, uh, when I was just moving pack up my old place. So that's there. You also get other new movie bases based of uh, Western movies. You got the last road, you got the last ranch of the Pants of Prime, Ranch of Ranch Season Prime, um, Day of the Wolves, Gunman. God man, God man, uh, Deadwood Dead Deadwood seventy six. Ain't uh, any gun can play. Dan can Dan Kenny Law, Boot Hill. Law of forty five S. Yam. Joe of it, Kid of Avenger. This this man can't die. Dead Aim, Raw Hit, Server Gun, Servant Journey, Hanging, I mean, Hanging Man, Crying Blood Angus, and Buffalo Stampin'. So, contouring the base of all the Western movies, you get all 20 movies. Not too bad, really. Like I say, I haven't really watched all of all those basic 20 the sets, but I am going to try my best to we acquire basically getting the basic involved in this whole movie. And of course we got another basic uh set version and that of course Taboo Tales. Now, like I say, I wasn't really up at basically picking this up, but I thought what the hell? I thought, well why not? I'll pick it up just for a bit for the complete of Buzz of Agree. And it's a very bizarre it's not really it's one of the basic bizarre basic films I ever watched. Because I was watching the uh, of course the Midra Agent Menace and that is, of course, this one here. When you have a bunch, of, I had to say that, I had to say it for no discipline for mid, for a base of little people. But you have little people who are westerns, cowboy uh, boys and cowboy girls, trying to be very good as a, as a and it, It's fine for you know for a a basic old school. Man. Well, actually, well, actually, that is, of course, the. Uh, the mar oh, oh, this is actually the marijuana kind of uh, menace. This is the marijuana one. What was the, uh, where is it? Um, I know I just saw it originally. 
Oh yeah, the terror of the uh, tiny tiny town, which is a very 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 kind of really uh, taboo tale flick, and this is actually a drop up drama, kind of like in the early thirties, forties, and fifties movie eras, because this is actually taken from really based off the thirty forties and fifties uh, movie uh, kind of era. So yeah. For the Marilyn uh, Menace, it's kind of like based on a bunch of group of high school group, uh, students who take out marijuana, and that's it. I mean, the only thing I will have to say is based on the uh, terror of the tiny town. I mean, that is kind of probably the most very epic, uh, very uh, taboo film I ever watched, and definitely like to watch all the other movies, Richard, because you have, of course, The Rivals of Romanus, The Vengeance of the Daughters, uh, Cocaine Phyllis, Change of Life, Chain of Life, Terrors of the Tiny Town, Wild and Wicked, Test to Babies, Mad Young, Mad Young, Marijuana Menace, The Marijuana Witness, uh, Sex Madness, Cannabis Live with the Souls, and She Ain't Saying No. So, yeah, not much I can say about it, but really, this is kind of nice for this uh, set to pick it up. So, of course, you have the front card of basically all the Tide movies, so especially. Shocking 12 exhibited advances spectacular move scandalous movies or films pronouncing that right but so yeah so, oh please I can show you the back cover with the uh, female basically into basically based in the red um, picture we have all the movies and of course we have in them basically in one DVD casing Come on, man, Creek. Get yourself a nice, decent uh, DVD case. I know you're trying to basically go on cheap, but come on. And next up, we have, of course, a four movie pack. Well, we have one basically is an eight movie pack and four movie packs. So, of course, we have the four movie pack with basically starring none other than basically Nestor Swipes in the front cover. You have, of course, uh, a lot of well known basic stars. Uh, I'll make to know basically of uh, celebrity stars. Then you have, of course, one of the basically all time one of my favorite Richard Marshall all time action kind of guys. Jeff and Jeff and Van Dan if I pronounce it. Jeff I pronounce it. Van Dan. I call him Van Dan versus said Jeff Richard. Van Dan, the guy who did recently uh, uh Street Fighter, Street Fighter movie. Which he did very terrible but in but in his movies he's all featured with basically with of course the soldier the Universal Soldier Return, the knockoff, the hard cops and second command. So, the Universal Soldier, I never seen. I have heard of it. I have originally seen it before, but it's been probably some time being. I'm not sure when I've seen it originally. I do quite remember seeing him in that movie, but I don't remember seeing him missing in Street Fighter. So, that's pretty much it for that. And then, originally, of course, for Web C. Snipes movie, he's in only featuring in one, Web C. Uh, one movie he's in, and that is, of course, the Common Order, and the other movies, of course, featuring with basically with stars Ricochet, uh, Jeff Kinnan, and Mark, and Mark Rapman, Rapman, I pronounce it. But uh, yeah, really, this kind of this like other basis action oh, and basically uh, action guys, uh, famous people, and they are featuring, of course, the Face of Terror, the Blood of Crime. And the crash point, and the hunt, and the hunt, and the hunt for Eagle One crash point. So yeah, really kind of nice epic action film. And then we have, of course, one of the I think it's probably my favorite action film, Steven Seagal Feel Four movie pack. We have Steven Seagal based in, he's only featured in two movies. He only featured basically in Tech Force and Into the Sun. I have to think the Into the Sun is. Probably might not the best originally Steven Skull movie in every time. I do remember seeing him in The Patriot when he was this you know school teacher and being the doctor and everything else. So I love that he was fine based in that movie basically. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe just me originally. But also you've got other basically uh, that's uh, basically action uh, stars. You have Donner, you have uh, Dolphin Lincoln and. King, how do you pronounce his name originally? The guy who did Richard Batman Forever, uh, Van, Ke Van Kingdom, if I pronounce that. He's actually featuring, he's actually in this movie, Khan Serkinant, and then basically Dolphin Lemberman, uh, he's basically, he's actually in this movie, Russian Specialist. 
So, content for that, that's pretty awesome. Now, here's the thing about this set, and this is, of course, the Falling Upward 8 movie pack. Now, the reason why I want to get this is because it has this movie, Shazam, starring none other than Shaquille O'Neal. Now, that's a bit of that's no, Shaq O'Neal, which is why I think it's this kind of Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq O'Neal, I can't pronounce his name really, but O'Neal, the guy who is the basketball, who is an official basketball NBA uh, superstar. And the reason why I wanted to get this, because I finally remember seeing this movie on the Walt Disney Channel back in 1998 or 99, I can't remember which it was during the time, but this movie. That was probably the most bizarre way for Shaq to basically feature it. I mean, we see him basically in Steel. Now, I haven't seen that movie Steel. I haven't seen it. So, don't try to spoil me for it. I haven't seen it. But the reason why this movie is so epic, the reason why this movie is so kind of bizarre, he starts to be it because it's a genie. Then, of course, you have the child star. I forget what his name is, but I don't know what his name was. But uh, you have the child star who... Grant his basically, I guess, four or three wishes, some of them that run time wishes basically in this movie, and he's on me to just be as a juice. I mean, I'm sorry. Like, it just, it, it feels like, you know, the one thing that I hate about that movie, about this movie, is because, you know, the guy, the, the, the actor who played uh, the kid, you know, whatever his name is, I can't remember which basically, like I said, it's been a while to see this movie, but the only thing I hate about that kind of, it's because he is trying to tell basically Shaft to you know when he's granting basically uh, four or five wishes. And then he all made it just be such a juice and a jerk to Shaft because he wants to have a family back. It's like, <laughs> why is that big? It's a big deal. I mean, it's not, it's like, it's not too often basically seeing that originally basically for any family member who basically have a divorce uh, trial for basically any child. But, you know. What can you do? But the other movies that we saw in feature, and you have, of course, The Wrong Guy, The Sixth Man, The It's Pal, The Movie, uh, never seen that original basis. I love the chick, that, love, love the basic, watch it. Go Fishing, Mr. Rome, Carriage Boy, Shazam, you know, and also you got Crime, I can't pronounce, Crime Prime, starring basically the guy who did uh, Home Alone, Home Alone 2. And also you have, of course, David, David Wayne, who did much of basic movies that he's been in, like, of course, Blank Man, Mo Money, um, I think, um, Last Man Stand. I mean, the guy is just a nice person ever. And also you have, uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, shoot. Oh, Dom, uh, Dan, Dan, uh, Raff, Dan, uh, Dan, uh, man. Yeah, how do you pronounce it? The guy who did the Ghostbusters movies. Um, you have him there, just there, and then I haven't really thought that he was in this movie version. I'd like to check that out. So yeah, nice for the set. So you got the front cover, you got the back, and you have, of course, this time not only just base of, uh, in a triple base in a base of single case, we have him in a triple case. So this right out base for four movies. I didn't know much about the quality of it. Was very probably only friend of the movie. I know for for a lot of uh, film for a lot of film fans who have disadvantage about seeing their movies and basically in these kind of sets. And I don't know if I have a really good chance of watching them, so I might get a chance to do that version. But I like these sets because you get not only this and that, you also have them in a proper casing, but you have. Two side, you have basically movies in the process of one. So you have two movies in the process of one disc. So that's not too bad. So that's, of course, the uh, Van Dan set. Of course, you have Stevenson Skull, and of course, his follow basically of Action Heroes and the other set, which is nice. And the quality, it's not too bad version of everything else. And then, of course, you have. Uh, Wasting snipes and basically one area, and that's that. So, not too bad. I mean, 
the reason why I like about these is that they actually released the Invasion Four packs. They actually did. They actually did a couple of Blu-ray ones. So maybe I'll probably pick those up. Maybe hope sometime being. So that's that. So let's put these up here. <clears throat> then we'll go to another TV show set. Now, of course, I had really been wanting to basically get some cop drama version for some time being, and and get pro And this one, of course, is another basic ripoff. But this was doing right after Power Rangers came before. Because Power Rangers didn't really came out originally basically in, in 1993 or or 95 somewhere around that. I get so really confused based on like year which about what shows come on in basically year year. So that's another big big story part of story. So you do have of course basically the probably the most convivial kind of just uh, sci-fi uh, basically monster. Uh, giant to a robot which they, uh, and that is of course Ultraman the complete series and this was basically released with all of this time and the reason why I wanted I was basically wanting to get this the reason why I get it is because well it's a nice really set version I thought really, I could check it out I actually watched the first episode I haven't watched the base of the entire episodes yet so yeah so I probably will get a chance to doing that but definitely love, the, love having this and the great thing I like about this is because not only that you have the Dopey Digital, well Dopey, uh, Dope, Dopey English dub uh, on base of the track. You also basically get very well because of the basis of interview uh, with the the creative team basically who did the show. So what they actually did, they actually put this machine in a nice format. You have Ultraman's uh, um, face on base of the front cover, and you have this here. You have the base, the title, and the uh, featurettes on the other side, which is kind of weird, but you know it's it's fine. And I guess it's just it all depends with what you're trying to design, Rich, and everything else. So that's that, and you have of course Ultraman and all of his uh, his uh, I guess his former base of body base of transforming to. So you have that, and then it is a 39 episode on four discs. So we open it up. We have, of course, all the discs in basic one basic package, which is nice. So they all basically contain in, in basically on their own form and then that that and they form in basic one disc. And the quality you're looking, you're probably looking at basically pay a total of ten a basic episode per per disc. So it's not too bad. The only thing the quality is not too really this, you know, not really interesting, but really decent good quality. And we of course we have another mini series. That will only last for just only for one season, and I'm surprised that I was looking forward to actually holding on to this one. As of course, um, probably the most at least uh, cop drama I ever watched, originally, and never heard of it, originally, but love to pick it up. So of course I have Daybreak, the complete series starring Tyrone Diggs. Uh, I love I love basically most of basically some of the actors, but. Um, I look at this and think, no, time to do it's in this uh, show called Daybreak. Love to pick that up. Also, there's actually the actor who did the um, the agent from uh, Chunk, the um, TV show um, Chunk on on NBC back in uh, 2000. What was it that should come on? I think in 2010 or 2011, something around that time. But uh, really liked the actor. I already watched the first episode, and the thing about this show, it's it's more kind of like a time uh, force uh, factor basic of uh, uh, mini series because it divides with basically of what happened and what happened with Dribbin and everything else was really what's going on for his, for um, um, Dick's character and it's actually not bad Richard for a lot of reasons so that's not too bad so of course we have of course the front cover we have the front cover which is nice. Then we have, of course, the <clears throat> uh, back cover. It's on tour basically with 13 episodes, which is very much a short basic mini series, so it's not too bad. Short basic is for special features. We have all basic 13 episodes, including seven episodes never before error and basically in the network broadcast, running basically in the brunt of the series, especially of the. Then, of course, we have uh, for feature ads, we have. Interviews with cast and crew, you get all basically 13 audio commentaries, all 13 episodes, which is very well nice. 
I mean, not many basically shows I know of will basically do 13 episodes of commentary. Especially when you look at the uh, Spider-Man anime, the new the new Spider-Man anime series, it does have all the basic feature, all the basic features, including all the basic commentary, basically in one set. Then you have behind the scenes footage, and that is pretty much it for that set. And as we can show you the distance itself, and here it is. This is the basically, the, like I said, I just watched the first pilot, and I. I find it very well interesting. Very well enjoy for show. Really, really enjoy for the really moment. So we're gonna take a quick break because, like I say, I'm gonna basically get myself some water and I'm thirsty. And we'll continue on to my collection of what I purchased through the purchase of 2013. So all right, see you until then, part three. Eric, how we pronounce it? Gene himself basically turned into sharks into the format. If you look at Bruce and Courtney and the Turtles, they turn to humanized basically turtles. And for basically you got the humans turning to human basically sharks that basically not really eat pizza but also eat kinda like junk food. <laughs> That's the base of uh, this basically of this anime form. But it is a nice wish to basically see this form. So of course we have the front cover which you got all the four uh, sharks characters. I don't much know much about the characters, but I know for a fact it is pretty uh, epic. Of course, they name is of course Johnny, John, Bobby, Corbin, and Synchronum, if I pronounce the name right, who basically team up versus stop Dr. Canudan and his basically deadly species are basically transforming the citizens into fictionalized city into basically mutants with no free will. Yeah, that's uh, pretty epic right there, originally. That's a uh, nice version. Uh, sorry about that, version. yeah. So that's, of course, the uh, the entry base of how the sharks were, were basically created. And you do have a bonus episode of Cops, the case of the boy who cries the sea, monster, cry the sea monster. And that's pretty nice. So based on towards the set, well, this is a Mel Creed set. And I actually did not like the, well, I didn't say I didn't like Richard. I just don't like the fact that you got the uh, basically uh, Mel Creed uh, DVDs in a basically uh, format package of basically you put them in um, um, in the how do you pronounce it? those black uh, um, casing. But I did venture fashion myself to put them in the Nixon DVD casing. But the only thing is the four disc set. So you have this one and two. Okay, get this out. I gotta be careful with these. And then you got this three and four. So, not too bad. And of course, you do have a bonus episode of the, um, of Cops, which is down here. I don't know if you're about to see. There we go. Down there. And that's pretty much it. So, originally, to my sense, I really kind of like this anime. I, mean, I finally remember seeing this on television. I know it wasn't really getting that much popular. I know they actually did. Uh, toys adaptation and actually did kind of commercial bits. So let's continue on to another basically DVD sets, and that of course the Milk Creek sets. So yeah, I'm gonna basically do this a three part version. So definitely uh, for be for sure version for that version being in mind. So of course uh, we're gonna start off none basically a animated that movie that well an anime movie. <laughs> I wish it was an anime movie. Uh, anime series, and I only run for 40 episodes, and I'm surprised that Mel Creed, they really are just step up their game, which, I mean, they, there's some Mel Creed stuff that I'm just really looking forward to getting, I'm just, I just love their, their sets, I mean, they're just, they're just awesome, really. We're because of the Mel Creed, you're really getting the ball. I mean, yeah, of course, uh, um, what's that other basic movie, well, the, uh, DVD company, um, Chat Foundry. Yeah, they're fine, originally, but they originally, but Metal Creek, they really are trying to step up with their game. And that's, of course, basically, again, the 40 episode series, Street Sharks. Now, I haven't seen Street Sharks since, uh, I think, when, it's, when it was fairly new in the 90s. And this was something that I was really looking forward to, to basically picking this up because this was during 1940, 19, 19, 19, 1994 to 1996. So this was during right after, originally, when, um, this show got popular, and this was, of course, the Deke Entertainment uh, anime cartoon. It is a typical version of, of Teenage Mutant Turtles, but it involves with sharks. Nothing more I can say about it. But I do like the 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 idea 
of having a reputation of uh, King and Neutral Turtles from other basic uh, base animals. There's of course there was Street Sharks, there was of course the Stream and Dinosaurs, one of them to be the four basically uh, kind of like turn them the half show Ninja Turtles kind of like rip off. And I think that's what I know of. I don't know what other basically anime they did that rigid format to make re rebuff buff up the Teenage Turtles uh, version. I know, of course, um, Battletoads is like an adaptation of of, uh, uh, of uh, rip off of Teenage Turtles. So that's 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 the third one. And I think that's pretty much it. That's what I know of. Originally. That's pretty much it. But really, I enjoy really watching some of the episodes. Um, didn't really watch much of often of it because, well, it just kind of got a little too weird, Richard. But still, I did like to watch the. I did watch the first pilot. I didn't watch the first base of how they would generate. They would generate. Mail Creek doesn't do that. Doesn't try to ruin their quality for base of nice original sets. And yeah, they're cheap for base of for about uh, about five bucks. I actually got this online, Richard, through uh, Amazon for about I think was going in total for. I think five or ten, Richard. It's depending on based on when they were selling, but uh, they were selling this for about five or ten dollars. So, third base of that, you have of course the wonderful base of front cover of the samurai guy or superhuman samurai, and on the back you have a nice good artwork on the back of the samurai hero fighting a alien creature, somewhat, and you have the uh, of course the. Uh, clip you have. Uh, I did not know uh Matthew Mendel was in the show. Which I did not know it's like, oh my God, that's the guy who did uh, the the uh, the uh, the son Richard from uh, Mrs. Sapphire. And I was like, oh okay, that's yeah, that is him. And I just did not know it until basically he was just kind of like on manly, just basically being the kind of the young consumer, basically unknowing uh, child after Richard based in that movie. So. That's not too bad, versus seeing him again, versus seeing this in this form. I do remember, fondly remember him, but I did not notice he was in the show. I did not notice until I basically uh, heard about he was in Mrs. Doubtfire. So, yeah. So, in to base of the set, you have a, well, of course, a, <clears throat> a 3D set. So, you have, of course, this one and two. And then on the front of it, you have this three. So, not too bad, Richard, for basically this wonderful set. I mean, um, it only runs for about. Oh, let's see. Uh, let me get this up first right here. So, there we go. Okay. Uh, it only runs about ten hours and thirty minutes, so it's not too bad for basically for twenty ep twenty eight episodes. Uh, of course, this one was running for about fourteen hours and forty seven minutes. So compared for this, this is a lot more longer. Because like I said, this is only basically forty episodes for the complete series. And this is only 28 episodes of basic for the uh, volume one. So basically that that's pretty nice for for these sets right here. So next up we have of course movie adaptations that you know are very well kind of interesting. We'll get to the TV, other TV show sets which will be basically a little bit later. But, so yeah, I don't know if that was basically part of the cases of that Richard because uh, generally it was basically not really all about all this. And the next set, Richard, that I want to pick up, and this is I finally remember. I used to own this on VHS, Richard, and I was surprised I didn't really own it anymore. So I didn't really mind it was on DVD. And I was, of course, Super Human Samurai Cyber Squad C Volume 1. Yes, I've been really wanting to basically see this on DVD format. I know they actually did a couple of basic VHS volumes, but I don't think they actually did an actual complete series set of DVD. But fortunately, thanks to Mel Creed, they actually did not only basically Volume 1, they actually did Volume 2. Uh, it's already out already. I'll definitely pick that up, which is hopefully sometime being. Uh, of course, a rip-off adaptation of Power Rangers. That's also another basically kind of rip-off Power Rangers, and that is, of course, Tattoo... Superhuman Tattoo... Uh, Giant, something like that, version. I can't pronounce it, but, you know, the uh, the kind of format version that they actually did receive from this... This, this was been basically in 1993, and of course it was Dick Entertainment. So of course, basically on this basic title, it says, Let's Samurai, guys! It's time to kick some giga butt. Directed based of the cyber composition of the Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad Volume 1. Matthew Grinfman, also basically uh, Mr. Daffar, and basically the hot chick, starring sorry, as Sam Cullen, a, a zipper kid with basically a talent for a program of video games. One day, 
I mean, while basically forming the end of his rock band, recently, Sam was stuck between the sudden enemies and an energy source to transform him into the one that could create one of the characters of his video game of it, one of his one of the characters in his video games. After Sam and his high school friends discovered that the alien wardrobe, alien warlord, but that's the name right, warlords has the effect of a digital world with monsters and masters in the creating of superhuman samurai cyber squad. In order the samurish and salmon and salmon salmon the evil base of of gain of much of enter the cyberspace to rid up base of the earth basically answer the digital containment of its exposed oh, the exposed in in digital inform digital inconvenient if I'm that's not really right. In spite of the uh, cyber base, the world Sam's samurai style with Sam, Sally, Tragedy, and uh, Cindy. I can't even pronounce the name. Cindy, Cindy, Tramps, and after Bub, Adam, Adam, I can't pronounce his name. As fighting the evil Comic Con, uh, Carnaton, and his evil band of monsters in the cyber space conundrum. Yeah, not much about this anime. Not much about this live action rip off Power Rangers sub so, uh knockoff. But it's not a bad recently uh kind of like series. I know they actually did three seasons if I'm not mistaken. I know it was probably three or two seasons. But you get all twenty eight episodes of the Super Human Samurai Run for the first time on D V D, which is kinda interesting because mm, this show hasn't really got much fan much fan art recently, I mean, much, much, I uh, can't speak, much as fans that people wanted. I mean, I fondly remember, I used to basically own the toy, the actual basically, uh, samurai toy, and along with basically with the samurai transformer, uh, when he transformed the mega, uh, superhuman samurai cyber, when all the main four vehicles performed based on the superhuman samurai, that's what, uh, 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 um, mega sword. And that's what basically this character is. You know, he's a samurai, but he is also a super samurai who is kind of the cyberspace take on basically in the uh, ninja format. <laughs> yeah, you can try to say that there's a lot of ripoffs and reasons of a base of, of this show because you can see that the martial arts and the martial arts of it is so kind of terrible. I mean, it's not bad, it's just not really proper thing because, of course, you got. The guy, the character, the guy was basically in the uh, samurai suit is trying to do all these high kicks and everything else. <laughs> it's like, and even the voice acting is just terrible. But it's actually this terrible, great looking to watch this again. And, you know, having this in a nice, rigid format, I mean, the quality looks nice. I mean, it's a little kind of picturishly, uh, bitch glitch, but it's a nice, decent quality. And I'm surprised that, um, Shaft, I mean, I'm sorry, not great, um, 